Hey guys, it's me again, Dante, with Ferrigno Freedom Channel. It's good to see you guys here again. And I know that I haven't been able to do nearly as many walk and talks as I used to do when I used to, before I was working in the restaurant industry. Now I do a lot of walking because I do in room dining at a hotel in the area. And that gives me about three to four miles of walking every day. Unfortunately, I can't record any of that. So, I thought I would take a look at something else that I've been wanting to share with you guys because I watch YouTube just like you do and I know you get things in your recommended stream that might be a little contrary to what you've been hearing from me and from other people on the carnivore diet. I saw this one video that keeps getting recommended to me and I've been sketchy about watching it until now because I thought it would be something we could look at together because it says Jordan Peterson reveals details about his meat only diet. And the thumbnail shows him saying, it almost killed me. So just by the thumbnail, I feel like we're going to get into some dubious information here. So let's take a look at it together and see what it looks like. As if Jordan Peterson's psychological views weren't enough to keep him in the news, he came up with another controversial idea, his meat-only diet. Vegans, sorry, but please skip this video if you want to sleep peacefully at night. And as for the rest of you guys, stay tuned to find out more about this Peterson guy and his diet regime. First things first, what is this Jordan Peterson diet that everyone's talking about? Well, as the name indicates, adopting this diet means that you have to eat a version of a carnivorous meal plan every single day for the rest of your life. Scary? The alternative is scarier, according to Jordan Peterson. So what will you have to do if you want to adopt this eating style of this Canadian clinical psychologist? Well, it's simple. Just eliminate all grains, fruits, and most vegetables from your diet, and you're good to go. Next up, most how's Peterson's vegetables. diet different from a carnivore's diet? We did notice you confused guys in the back. Don't worry, we got your back. Now, a carnivore diet allows zero carbs and only includes food that either walks, swims, or flies. Most people who adopt this diet either want to lose weight or want to treat an autoimmune condition. Now, most of you guys are aware of a keto diet, thanks to our celebs. Keto is a very <laughs> high-fat, moderate protein, and very low-carbohydrate diet. Most of the people who experienced it hated it because of the high amount of fat required. So for those people, a carnivore diet is an easy option, as it's a high-protein diet. Well, vegans, if you're still here and are boiling with anger, let's provide you a means to release it. Curse Sean Baker, an orthopedic surgeon all you want, as he He's the writer of a book titled The Carnivore Diet and is known as a leader in the carnivore diet movement. Now, the food you can eat on a carnivore diet includes red meat, organ meats, poultry, fish, eggs, bone marrow, butter, salt, and pepper. You can also have water, bone broth, milk, yogurt, cheese, coffee, tea, sauces, or gravies, provided they are made only with meat drippings mixed with butter or ghee and no binders, such as flour. Now, since you know about the carnivore diet, it'll be easy to spot the differences between a Peterson diet and a carnivore one. All right, real quick, I want to pause right there and say that's a pretty good description of the carnivore diet with a little bit of a swipe at Sean Baker for some reason. But so far, the information is pretty accurate. Uh, carnivore diet is different than what Peterson's doing, which is what I'm doing, which is lion diet. Although lion diet is a carnivore diet, Carnivore is a little bit less restrictive. Most versions of carnivore allow for a lot of different things that he mentioned. But uh, let's see what he says about lion diet now, or what he calls Peterson's diet. Okay, so the Peterson diet has two stages. The first stage is called the elimination stage, which requires you to eat just meat, water, and salt for at least two months. This phase is called the lion diet phase. Stage two allows you to have your greens with the meat, and Jordan likes to call it a modified carnivore diet. Now, the important question, did Jordan just wake up one day and say no to anything? I don't think I've ever heard him say that it's two months is the lion diet phase. Um, I'm not even sure I've ever heard him use the term lion diet. I've heard him say all beef diet. Now, I know Michaela is the one who called it lion diet, but I haven't really been able to reincorporate much of anything. So let's see what else they got to say here. 
other than meat. What if we tell you guys that Jordan Peterson isn't actually the founder of this diet? Wait, what? So did he steal someone else's idea and sell it using his name? Nope, that's also not the case. Cool down, you guys. Peterson and allegedly his diet rose to fame when the author of The 12 Rules for Life <coughs> talked about his experiences of adopting an all-meat diet during a 2018 episode of The Joe Rogan Experience. In the podcast, he said that he was first introduced to this diet by his daughter, Michaela, the professor at the University of Toronto tried it. I will admit that is the podcast that I watched that turned me on to this. And I don't know, I assume other people had heard of Michaela, but I was watching Jordan Peterson for a lot of his, what he was doing with his psychological videos where he was doing his classes online. And also when he started doing his Bible series lectures, I really enjoyed what he was doing there. So when he mentioned to Joe Rogan or Joe Rogan said, so are you still doing that all beef diet thing? I was like, wait a minute, what? He's doing an all beef diet? And I had had familiarity with a carnivore style diet having done Atkins back in 2006. But I was still eating a lot of things that I don't eat now. And one of the things I noticed as a side effect is that if I wasn't pounding vitamins heavily, then I was not getting the energy that I needed. Within a few days of not taking my multivitamins and several other vitamins while I was doing Atkins, I lost so much energy I had to miss two days of work. I was so beat. So when I found out about Michaela's uh, experiences and watched a lot of her videos, that was when I learned that salt was the key to having the energy you need because you're depleted of electrolytes. But anyway... I just thought I would point that out that this is exactly the way that I found out about it. So again, a little bit of truth mixed in here. So let's see where they go next. And followed the lion diet for two months. He then went on a modified carnivore diet for a year. Peterson told Rogan that he lost 50 pounds through this and his appetite went down by 70%. He said that he didn't get blood sugar dysregulation problems and needed way less sleep after that and also his gum disease was gone. What's more, his lifelong depression, anxiety... That's not exactly what he said. He... He did do a modified carnivore diet for a while where he was still having greens, but he wasn't getting the full success. He lost some weight doing that, but he didn't have the full relief that he got until he went to a strict ruminant meat, water, and salt diet. And his, he'll even say that he mostly eats beef and that that has cured a lot of the things that he mentioned there, like the gum disease and the numbness spot that he had in his leg and was able to help him get off of SSRIs. They had chronic depression in their family history. So that's not exactly what, what Jordan said he did. And now he's been doing lion diet ever since, and he still has great results. He's lost more than 50 pounds since then. I think it was more like 65 pounds the last I heard. Gastric reflux and associated snoring were all gone. His inability to wake up in the mornings, psoriasis, gingivitis, floaters in his right eye, numbness on the sides of his legs, and problems with mood regulation also went away, and he attributed it to the diet. Wow, seems like more of a miracle to us than something done by eating animals. Peterson also told Rogan that he was intellectually at his best, and he felt stronger and could swim better. Rogan then asked Jordan whether he took any vitamins, to which Jordan replied, that no, he only ate beef, salt, and water, and never cheated even for a little bit. He also didn't drink any soda or wine. And I always wish I could say I never cheated, cheated even a little bit, but I've cheated many times on this diet. But the more I stick with it, the better I do. Survived on club soda. Now let's hear it from Michaela Love Peterson, aka soda. the founder of this diet. For Michaela, adolescence was pretty bad as she had multiple debilitating medical diagnoses, beginning with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Her body's immune system began attacking her joints. These joint problems began affecting her hip, and on top of that, she had extreme fatigue, depression, and anxiety, brain fog, and sleep problems. She got diagnosed with depression in her fifth grade, and later she got idiopathic hypersomnia, which was just the doctor's fancy way of saying that they didn't know what was happening. Her doctors prescribed her several medicines, but none of them seemed to work. Michaela remembers taking large doses of strong immune-suppressing drugs, like methotrexate, but to no use. In 2015, she took matters into her own hands and found out the root of her issues. It was food. She then began cutting out food from her diet in steps. She started with gluten and kept going. She then eliminated dairy, soy, lectins, artificial sweeteners, and even non 
of artificial sweeteners. By the end of 2017, she was just left with beef, salt, and water. And some good news. The good news was that all of her symptoms went into remission. Michaela also gives consultations to people who want to adopt her lifestyle. So if you're interested, be ready to splurge $75 for an hour-long session. Now let's talk about the cultures that follow this diet. Whoa, now whoa, all whoa. the hold on. Splurge $75 to find healing for problems you've been having? You know, first of all, she, she's got a lot of people that want her attention. $75 for an hour of her time would be quite reasonable, especially these days. Um, I've seen much lower YouTube celebrities, I guess you would call them, or YouTube influencers charge $30 for a half hour. So $75 for an hour with Michaela would be quite reasonable especially if you're not getting any answers anywhere else and you want to have the answers you need to find out how you can get the healing that doctors aren't giving you. I know for a fact I spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars going to doctor's visits, plus the thousands of dollars seeing specialists and ER visits trying to figure out what was going on with my gut problem, and doctors never had one solution for me. So, if I could spend $75 talking to somebody for an hour and get something that's going to give me some solutions, I wouldn't call that splurging. I would call that saving money carnivore diet made us think about the Flintstone era and how men used to hunt animals for their food. But you may be surprised to know that traditionally carnivorous people still exist. For example, there are traditional Maasai men who eat nothing but meat. Not only that, but they also take in blood and half a gallon of full fat milk from their zebu cattle. Next, there are the Samburu people who eat meat and drink almost two gallons of raw milk each day for most of the year. Raw milk? We could never. Then there are the shepherds in Somalia who consume meat and a gallon and a half of camel's milk each day. Now let's talk about numbers. Each of these tribes gets more than 60% of their energy from animal fat and zero to low calories from non-animal products, and that's how they survive. Next comes the Inuit of the Canadian Arctic who survive on seals, walruses, whales, and fish. Now let's hear from the doctors and see what they have to say. He sounded like that was a negative thing when he said we could never. So I, I, all of that information I found to be reassuring about the carnivore diet myself. Let's hear from what doctors, let's hear from the doctors and see what they have to say about this, quote, miraculous diet. First of all, before I even click this, this guy doesn't look real healthy <laughs> right off the bat. <laughs> Let me take a look. He looks like he's high with them eyes open like that about this miraculous diet. Jack Gilbert, the faculty director at the University of Chicago's Microbiome Center and a professor of surgery, thinks that it's a very bad idea physiologically. He then explained it in medical terms. Gilbert said that after this diet, your body will start to have severe dysregulation, and within six months, you'll have no short-chain fatty acids in your cells. Um <clears throat> All right, so I've been doing this lion diet for two years and five months now. If I don't have any short chain fatty acids in my cells, then why am I still doing so well? What's going on? That sounds pretty important to me and I feel great. Let's keep going. On top of that, most of the byproducts of gastrointestinal polysaccharide fermentation will shut down. So you won't be able to regulate your hormone levels. And in the end, sorry, I got to keep stopping him. Hormones is one of the issues that I was dealing with when I started this diet. Actually, three years before I started doing lion diet, I had started taking testosterone treatments for erectile dysfunction. And I didn't know anything about taking testosterone. I just know that my doctor said it was a really low dose. I was taking a half of a cc of testosterone every week. And I had been doing that for years before starting this diet. After starting this diet, within the first 30 days, all the medicine I was on, I came off of, including testosterone. However, when I went back to see my doctor, he did agree that I should be off my blood pressure medicine and I didn't need all these other medicines if they weren't doing me any good and I was getting the results I was getting. But he kind of scared me a little bit when he said, well, if you stop taking the testosterone, especially after three years of taking injections, your body's not going to be able to produce the testosterone, so you're going to go down even lower than you were before you started this diet. And I thought, well, I definitely don't want that to happen.
So I had to continue taking that testosterone. And I really still didn't understand what I was doing, but I knew that I didn't want to have that negative side effect. So I kept going. Well, as a side effect of moving, my doctor and I were not able to get in touch or to have a follow-up appointment. And I hadn't gotten a new doctor here in Florida. So around the beginning of last year, I stopped taking testosterone altogether because I wasn't able to get refills on my prescription anymore. And I didn't notice any differences. And I thought, well, that's peculiar. I mean, I probably, I don't, I wouldn't say that I didn't have any benefit from it because I'm sure that I had a little bit of muscle mass gain from that, but I haven't noticed any differences in continuing to exercise and continuing to be able to put on muscle mass. It's been well over a year now since I've had any testosterone shots. And not only do I feel great, but also my tests back in June of last year showed that my testosterone levels were actually slightly higher than they were before I started treatments. And then when I got a new test done later this or, or earlier this year, back in March, my test showed that they were at normal levels, close to 600. So I don't see how it can say it dysregulated my uh, hormones or anything like that. And in the end, you'd enter into cardiac issues due to alterations in cell receptors and your microbiota would just be devastated. Damn, what in great... My microbiota would just be devastated. I took a microbiome test with this company called Ombre and I still have the prebiotics here. I haven't even opened these. I got three bottles of them from Ombre because they wanted me to represent their product. And I wasn't really convinced that it was very helpful or not. All I know was, is that when I took the test, it said that I had really good micro, micro bacteria, whatever, the gut bacteria was great. Uh, I forget the flowery language they used, but they basically made it sound like it was a teeming uh, forest of micro whatever. <laughs> You get what I'm trying to say, but it was trying to say that all of my gut fauna and flora or whatever you call it was doing great. The only thing that I was actually lacking in was something that was used to digest lactose because I hadn't had any milk in that entire year and a half before I took that first test. And then I took another test a little later and I still hadn't had milk and it still said I was doing great. So that was like six months later that I took that test. My microbiome was doing just fine. And I'm not having any gut problems doing this diet. It's only when I eat things that aren't on lion diet that I get any problems. His anatomy, did he say? Okay, we get the message. Some super scary stuff will happen to us on this diet. Gilbert said that the life Michaela would live if she didn't die of colon cancer or some other severe cardiometabolic disease was just unimaginable. Okay, enough about this miraculous diet. Time to talk about the people who didn't find this diet useful. Alan Levinowitz, the author of The Gluten Lie, tried this diet after hearing rave reviews. He ended up losing seven pounds, which he thought was due to eating fewer calories overall as he was bored of eating meat only. He was psychologically exhausted as he missed snacking at coffee shops and returned to omnivory soon. Next comes... Sounds like he just didn't stick with it to begin with, and it doesn't sound like he needed it for weight loss or any other autoimmune issues. And it also sounded like he... Had, he probably was too lazy to sit around and cook his meat. I know that was the hard thing for me was getting to be where I could cook all the time like that. But thank God for air fryers. James Blunt, who developed scurvy after two months on an all-meat diet. The English songwriter went on this diet to tease his vegan friends. And let's just say he damaged himself more than he did the vegans. Next on our list is Joe Rogan. Rogan. I got to pause it again. Scurvy? Really? You know, it doesn't take but a couple of months to get scurvy based on what you're eating. And usually it requires some carbohydrate intake and a lack of vitamin C. From what I understand, I'm no expert on the issue, but I do know that our early sailors got it. And it had a lot to do with the stuff that they drank. That stuff you call grog wasn't just liquor. I mean, it was all kind of stuff mixed in there. And they weren't getting any, any vitamin C as well. They also weren't getting a whole lot of meat either. They were eating a lot of bread and things like that. So my question is, is what was he really eating? Because I would have gotten scurvy by now. Some of the side effects of scurvy include bleeding gums. 
my gums have been the best they have ever been. Even my dentist says that I have really strong gums and my teeth are always clean and I hardly ever even brush. I do floss a lot, but I don't brush hardly at all and my teeth stay clean all the time, especially since I quit vaping and quit smoking. But I don't have any signs of scurvy in, what is that, 29 months of doing Lion Diet? So that some, something was wrong with what he was choosing to eat and not to eat for him to get scurvy. Let's back up a little bit. The songwriter went on this diet to tease his vegan friends, and let's just say he damaged himself more than he did the vegans. Next on our list is Joe Rogan. Rogan began a carnivore diet in January 2020. He did experience some weight loss, but he also had diarrhea during this time. So according to experts, his weight loss might be because of excessive diarrhea that was caused by his diet. Also, Jordan and Michaela had a... All right, lastly... Or not lastly, because apparently they're going to go into Jordan and Michaela and tell, them, tell us how it almost killed him now. Joe Rogan, first of all, he did complain about the diarrhea. And most people complain about the diarrhea. It's a very common thing you get. We call it keto flu in the carnivore world. And it's something that typically happens when your gut bacteria that's used to eating things that you stop feeding it those gut bacteria start dying off and it causes what's called keto flu. Now, in addition to that, I've noticed when I eat things that are not on lion diet, I very often get keto flu again. I've had it when I eat ice cream. I ate ice cream after my stepfather died and it was really hard on me. And I just had one of those days where I was a little depressed and dug into a whole thing of ice cream one day. And the next day I had really bad keto flu again and it lasted for a few days. I even did my first four day fast shortly after that because I had really just kind of thrown my body uh, uh, for a loop, dumping all that garbage back into it. And then the other thing with keto flu is that it goes away if you're only eating the meats you're supposed to eat. Trust me, I know, because when I do that, my Bathroom visits are perfectly normal. And when I was on Atkins back in the day, back in 2006, 2006 to 2007, I was eating spinach salads, which had a lot of vegetables that weren't uh, colored or that were, you know, just green vegetables. And I was eating tuna fish and I was eating chicken. I was eating pork. I was eating seafood. So th the biggest difference is, is that I was adding those things that I was not adding now to a ruminant meat diet. But I had diarrhea the entire six to eight months that I was doing Atkins religiously. I did lose a lot of weight and I did feel a lot better, but nothing like I've experienced on lion diet. And then again, I didn't have the diarrhea issues on lion diet negative experience. He did experience some weight loss, but he also had diarrhea during this time. So according to experts, his weight loss might be because of excessive diarrhea that was caused by his diet. Also, Jordan and Michaela had a negative experience when they accidentally ate something that wasn't in their diet. Jordan said that the results were absolutely catastrophic. This implies that a carnivore diet will make you sensitized to the toxins and excess sugar of standard American diet foods. And you'll... Okay. Just saying that that implies that is where the lie is right here. If anything, what that implies is, is that when you stop feeding your body poison and you're no longer super desensitized to the garbage that you're eating because it's in everything you're eating, when you then reintroduce some of that garbage again, your body's going to react much more stringently to the reimposition of that poison or whatever it is that you're eating that your body doesn't react well to. I can look at pictures of myself before I started doing lion diet and my skin is completely red from inflammation or something. I don't know exactly what it was, but I, I used to wonder why I look pink all the time. Why do I look red in the face? I didn't look like that when I was younger. So I was wondering what had changed. And it had to be related to my diet because ever since then, my skin tone is normal and I get a lot of sun now. I never even need suntan lotion. It's wonderful. But there's no doubt that you're going to have a reaction eating poison again once you get all the poison out. And it has nothing to do with the fact that now you have become super sensitive to it. It's simply that you're no longer desensitized to it. 
I guess that's pretty much the end of the video. It's funny that philosopher Kierkegaard. Oh, yep. Yeah. Hear a joke that starts. Yeah, that was it. Sorry about that. Well, anyway, you know, I, I'm going to have to go back and find one of the videos where Jordan talks about his recent experiences on this diet because I know he was still doing lion diet even to this day, and he's still doing mostly beef. And when I say mostly beef, I mean the other things he might have occasionally are other ruminants. So he's still not doing uh, a modified carnivore diet. He hasn't added back vegetables like the guy mentioned. He's still doing mostly beef. And that's what I mostly do as well. I would buy lamb, but it's a little more expensive than it used to be ever since uh, the beginning of 2020. The prices went up on lamb and I haven't seen them come back down. Beef has kind of fluctuated and it's still about where it was when I started. So I still buy a lot of beef, especially when I can find it on sale. But if you like this video, please let me know in the comments so we can talk about it some more. And then if this is the kind of thing you would like me to be able to share with you where we can look at these together and talk about where the error that they're giving riding on the back of a lot of truth can be exposed so people aren't confused. And uh, I'll be glad to do another one of these. And I I'm probably going to do one just following up on Jordan Peterson's situation. So that way you'll have another chance to tell me if this is a format that you like. Stick around for the end of the video. I got a real quick message from Redmond Salt. A lot of you know that I love Redmond for my diet, and they have been just a wonderful company. They're an American company, which is something I love being an American. Uh, I love that the salt comes from an ancient seabed, so you're not getting modern-day shipping petroleum and uh, pollution in the water. It, so it's, it's a lot cleaner than what you're going to find in other salts out there, and it really tastes good, too. Then combine the fact they've got smoke salts and they've got their relight uh, electrolyte mix. they got some really good stuff. So stick around for that at the end, and I'll see you guys next time. If we pay extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?